Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at this physics question and it deals with projectile motion. And the question asks, you're six meters from one wall of a house and you want to toss a ball to your friend who is six meters from the opposite wall. The throw and the catch each occur one meter above the ground. What is the minimum speed that will allow the ball to clear the roof? And at what angle should you toss the ball? And they've got a little image here which shows you what's going on. So to deal with this problem, we're going to start by drawing a little diagram. And we're going to try and figure out the unknowns before we start this question. And um, one thing I wanted to mention is this over here. These are the formulas that you can use to solve this question if you haven't already seen it. You guys should already be fairly familiar with it. You can use one of these three formulas. And uh, I've used delta x here. You may be more familiar with delta d or something else. but uh, I'm just choosing delta x for that. So to start off with, we're going to label this. We have the catcher on the right side. We have the person throwing the ball on the left side. And we have the house here. Now, the length of the house, or the, the length of the base, is 6 meters. This guy over here is 6 meters away from the house, so this is another 6 meters. And this guy is 6 meters away as well. So the total length in the x direction, so delta x, is equal to 18 meters. And then we also know that the length of the house here, the side of the house, is about 3 meters. So this length here, and let's call this h1, 3 meters. And then we're also given the angle in the roof, and that's because we're supposed to find a height h2, which is this height here, because as you can see the house goes from down here and it goes all the way to the top of the roof, but they've only given us this length over here, so we have to try and find this length as well, which is going to equal some value, which we'll calculate in just a few minutes. And another thing they mentioned is that the player throws the ball from one meters above the ground, and the other player catches the ball exactly one meter above the ground. Now this little detail is going to play an important part in solving the question, but uh, we'll come back to that later. So first, what are our unknowns? We know that um, the acceleration in the y direction, which is this direction here, is negative 9.8, which is the acceleration due to gravity, meters per second squared. And then we know that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. We also know that the delta x value is 18 meters. And um, we have to calculate this h2 value so that we can get the delta y value at the maximum height. And let's see, let's go ahead and do that. So to find h2, what do we know? We know that um, the angle is 45 degrees. And we do know this length as well. If you'll notice, the um, tip of the roof is exactly halfway through the house. And the, ho the base of the house is 6 meters, so half of that is 3 meters. Which means that this length here is 3 meters. So that tells us that we have 3 meters here, an unknown value over here, and 45 degrees. So to find this, we can use tan because tan is the opposite over adjacent, so tan of 45 is equal to the opposite, which is h2 over 3 meters. Let's go ahead and write that, so tan 45 is equal to the opposite over 3 meters. So now we want to solve for h2, so we're going to move the 3 meters over there, so h2 is actually equal to 3 tan 45 degrees, and that's going to give us Tan 45, 3. So that gives us 3 meters. We're not done at this point. Um, so, as I mentioned before, the players start the throw at 1 meter and then the second player catches it at 1 meter. The reason that's important is because we're going to take the y value to start at this point here, not at the ground. So y equals 0 at 1 meters is what we're going to take. So it's almost like we're not considering 
anything below the one meter mark. So that means that the height that we're considering starts at one meter, not at the ground, which means that it's going to be this entire height subtracted by one meter. So now we know that H2 is equal to three meters, and we also know that H1 is equal to three meters from here. So the total height of the house, total, is equal to H1 plus H2. So then we get three meters plus three meters, which is equal to six meters. But as I just mentioned, we're not going to include the one meter mark here because we're taking zero or the y equals zero mark to be the one meter mark. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to subtract six meter by one meter. One meter, which is equal to five meters. So all we're considering is this much over here. And that's going to be five meters. Okay. So now let's go back to the question. What did the question ask? The question was asking, what is the minimum speed, uh, what minimum speed will allow the ball to clear the roof? Now the minimum speed you would need to require in order to clear five meters starting at one meter would be some value VI, right? And we're going to have to look at the VI in components. So VI, which is the velocity that he's throwing the ball with. Let's draw it over here. This is going to be VI. It's going to have an X component and a Y component. Here's the X component and here is the Y component and it's also going to have an angle. I don't think we, we don't need to worry about the angle for this question but uh, later on I will show you how to solve for the angle as well just in case you guys um, don't know how to figure that out. So we have VI we need to find vi of x and we need to find vi of y and when we have these two values we can calculate vi. So what do we know here? We know that at the maximum possible height minimum speed to ball, for the ball to clear the roof is at the maximum height which is 5 meters. At 5 meters we know that the final velocity is going to be 0. So when the ball travels from here let me just adjust the camera there, there we go when the ball travels from here, it goes all the way up. Let's pretend that's the tip of the roof. It's a little bit off, but... And then goes all the way down. The point right here, that's where VF is equal to zero. Okay? So we know that VF is equal to zero. We're looking for VI. X, and we need to find VIY. And we also know that delta Y, or YF, is... Um, five meters because that is the height of the house and we also know that the acceleration in the y direction is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared and the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero and in this case in this particular case we're looking at the maximum height of the house so at that point the delta x value is actually six plus three right because it's half of the house so it goes from here to here, which is 3 meters, and then from here to the first player, which is 6 meters. So the delta x value is actually equal to 9 meters. Okay, now we can go ahead and solve this problem. As you may recall, you have these three equations. And uh, we're going to start by solving the uh, vi value in the y direction. So we're going to use the third equation because we know that... Uh, Vf squared is equal to zero. Vi squared is what we're going to try and solve. And let's say y, it's in the y direction. Plus ay delta um, y in this case. So Vf squared is equal to zero, right? So that's zero squared, which is equal to Vi y squared plus, actually it's minus 9.8. and multiply that by the delta y value, which is five meters. And now let's solve for this. So we're going to bring, let's, okay, let me write this. Zero is equal to vi y squared and negative 9.8 times five. Okay, so we have negative 9.8 times five meters. And that gives us negative 49. So let's put that out of the way. We have 
vii squared minus 49. And we missed the 2 here, didn't we? My bad. So it's going to be 49 times 2, which is actually 98. Sorry about that. So negative 98. To, if you go back to the equation here, it has 2a delta x, which is why I added the 2, which I missed in the first place. So it's 2 times 9.8 times 5. So anyway, you end up with negative 98 here. So you move this to the left side, and then we get negative viy squared is equal to negative 98. So both the negatives cancel out, and you end up with viy squared is equal to 98. And then you get viy is equal to the square root of 98, which is equal to square root of 98 is 9.9 .9 approximately. So 9.9 .9 meters per second. You are not done at this point. All you know at this point is viy, which is this component here. 9.8 meters per second. You still have to solve for Vix. So that's what we're going to do next. So to solve for Vix, we first need to find delta t using the Viy that we just solved for. So what we can do is stay in the y direction. We can use this formula here. The first one, which is Vf is equal to Vi plus a delta t. And here's the thing. We just solved for Viy, right? And we know that Vfy is equal to zero. We know the acceleration of y, and we're just solving for delta t. So zero is equal to 9.9 .9 meters minus 9.8 meters per second squared delta t. This goes to the left side, so it becomes negative 9.9 .9 is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared delta t. And that's going to be meters. And then we get delta t, we just bring the 9.8 over here, so is equal to negative 9.9 .9 divided by negative 9.8, and the negatives cancel out. So we end up with a positive value, and let's check our units here. We have meter, meters per second squared, oh what am I doing, it's actually meters per second, my bad, so that's meters per second meters per second. So the meters per second and meters per second cancel out, so all you're left with is second. And then we have 9.9 .9 divided by 9.8, which is equal to 1.01 seconds. 1.01 seconds. Okay, so that's the time that it takes for the ball to go from his hand all the way to the top of the roof. And now we're going to take this time interval, and we're going to solve for the um, initial velocity in the x direction. So we're solving for this component now. So we're going to use the second equation for this, which was this one over here. So let's go ahead and write it out. xf is equal to xi plus vi delta t, and this is vi in the x direction, um, plus one half a in the x direction, delta t squared. Now if you recall, a in the x direction was 0, so we're going to set that to 0, that entire term there becomes 0, and we also know that xi is equal to 0, so what we end up with is xf is equal to vi x delta t, because both those terms go to 0, and then we know xf to be 9 meters in this case. Because remember, it's only from the center of the house all the way to the first player, so that's 9 meters. Is equal to Vix, which we don't know. And we found that delta t is 1.01 seconds. Okay, so we solve for Vix. We get Vix is equal to 9 divided by 1.01, which is equal to, that's a meter in that second, Let's go ahead and plug that in. 9 divided by 0.01 is approximately 8.9 meters per second. So now we've gone ahead and we've found Vix. We're not finished yet because if you recall, we found the y component of Vi to be 9.9 .9, 
and now we know that the x component of vi is 8.9 what we're trying to find though is vi over here so in order to find that we will need to use the following equation vi is equal to the square root of both the components so v um, i x squared plus v i y squared and that's going to equal the square root of 8.9 squared plus 9.9 .9 squared and let's go ahead and plug that in square root of 8.9 squared plus 9.9 .9 squared which gives you 13.3 meters per second. That is the VI value. Now the next question or part B of the question is at what angle should you toss the ball? Now what this is asking is just for the theta value of the initial velocity which is this value over here. What you would do is you would take the tan because it's the opposite over these are the two values you know right so it's the opposite over the adjacent of theta so tan theta is equal to the opposite, which is vi of y over vi of x. So you want to find theta, so theta is equal to tan minus 1, so tan inverse of vi y, which was 9.9 .9 meters per second, over uh, vi x, which was 8.9 meters per second, and that will give you the tan inverse of that value which is 9.9 divided by 8.9 which is 48 degrees degrees and this is going to be 48 degrees above the horizontal because you're taking the base value here and it's going above the horizontal 48 degrees so 48 degrees above the horizontal Okay, and that's it for this question. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you liked it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.